So everyone knows C major. So C major, yeah, no flats and sharps. Okay, fine. Okay. Then after that we have, is it G? Yeah. Okay, cool. And then after that we have what? F? You know, scales are just too confusing. Who wants to do scales? Nah. Hello guys, welcome to this channel. My name is Martino. I'm the founder of the London Saxophone School. We're here to help you master your skills on the saxophone, whether it's with lessons, courses, workshops, masterclasses, and whatnot. We're here to help you. So for any questions that you might have, just let me know here below in the comments and it will be my pleasure to help you out. Okay. So today we're talking about scales and you might say, oh no, scales, another video on scales, why? I don't know this voice, but anyway, I totally get it that, you know, scales can be boring, can be tedious, can be annoying, you know, but if you find the fun in scales, they can be super awesome for the development of your playing, okay? But I know that, you know, scales, there's so many scales in there that can be super confusing and also, you know, you might be practicing scales, but nothing seems to stick in your brain, you know, your mind and your fingers and you just practice them and then they just vanish after a few days or so, okay? So I'm going to show you a few little tricks that are actually great for learning scales scales and to help you out in really ingraining those scales into your playing. Today I'll be taking major scales as the main example for the whole video, okay? But I want you to know that you can take the same approach and then apply that to any other type of scale that you're doing. So it doesn't really matter which type of scale you're doing. We're just going to take major to make things simple. So the very first thing you want to know is that you don't have to play all 12 keys at every practice session. If you do that, you'll go crazy. It will take you a long time and there's really no need, okay? Because you also want to play some music, which is more fun than skills. I get it. Fine, okay? So it's so much better to play, say, two or three keys and stay on those for several days, even just for just a week or two weeks, or whatever you need. It doesn't matter, okay? Because doing that, you will really ingrain those keys into your brain and into your fingers, okay? So much better. So when I'm learning you know, scales or just I'm revising scales or whatever when I'm teaching, I like to do it this way. I like to divide the keys into two groups, into the first group, which is scales that go from zero flats and sharps to three sharps and flats, and then keys that go from four sharps and flats all the way to seven sharps and flats. I've done a video explaining how this works in detail and I'm gonna pop it up in here so you can watch that. Now the second thing we're gonna talk about is range. And you might be asking yourself, shall I play them full range, three octaves, four octaves, an octave, half range, what do I do, <laughs> okay? Now, confusion when it comes to skills, I told you, right? <laughs> so to make things super, super simple, this is my advice. For beginners, I will play scales one octave only, okay? So I would make sure that you play all the keys ranging from zero sharps and flats all the way to seven sharps and flats, but just one octave. That will allow your brain to really visualize the scale and to really feel the scales, you know, and to really ingrain the movement in your fingers, okay? Because the harder the scales get, the more, you know, the more positions you have to remember. But do it one octave will really allow you to visualize everything properly. Don't do them too fast. Actually, do them pretty slow, okay? So you can really see them and you can really visualize them. That's my advice, okay? And also be sure to play them all slurred and all tongued, okay? That's super important. Those are the two most important articulations that you can practice. You should always practice all slurred and all tongued. I actually have prepared for you guys a free PDF that you can download here below in the description with the seven most important articulations for you. You can download that. That's inside the Music Vault folder. You can have that on your stand and just follow that, okay, every time you practice. And by the way, I'm super pleased to announce our next guest for our next Saxophone Jazz Masterclass taking place on May 14th. That is going to be Kenneth Che, who is the world's leading classical player. You have to check him out. He's an amazing, amazing player. We're going to learn a lot from him. If you're interested in learning more, I'm just going to leave the link here below in the description and I hope to see you there.
Now for intermediate players, this is what I would do. Now, depending on your level, you know, the word intermediate is really blurry in a way, okay? But I will play them full range. Now, full range means this. You start your scale on the tonic, which is, you know, the note that gives the name to, to the scale, okay? So if we have G major, the tonic would be G. If we have F major, the tonic would be F. Makes sense, so it's the first note, okay? So you start your note on the tonic, you go all the way up to the highest note, okay, within the scale, you go all the way down to the bottom of the instrument, and then you finish on your tonic, something like this. <laughs> So for example, if we have, let's say G major, okay, I will start on G, I would go up to the highest note within this scale, okay, which is going to be F sharp, okay, then I would come down all the way down to the bottom of the instrument to B, which is my lowest note within the scale, and then I would finish on G, okay, make sense? So something like this. <laughs> And the same goes for, let's say, F major. So F major has only flats, it doesn't have any sharps. So I will start on F, okay? Then I would go all the way up to top F. I, I go up to top F because I don't have an F sharp in F major, make sense? Okay, so I go all the way up to F, then I come down all the way down to the bottom of an instrument. In this case, it's gonna be a B flat because F major has a B flat, okay? And then I finish back on my tonic on F, so something like this. And this is basically the normal way that saxophone players play scales, and I would say wind players. And just because we have a very limited range, we need to take advantage of all the notes of all the range that we have in there. If you know, if you picture, you know, piano players, they can play five octave scales on every single note if they want to, because they have a lot of keys, you know, so they can go up and down as much as they want because, you know, the instrument allows it. In our case, we have to do everything we can to maximize our range as much as possible. Make sense? So scales can be fun. I love doing scales to just do so much for my playing and I just, I always go back to scales all the time. Okay, so you should do them. But remember, focus on two, three keys at a time, no more. Okay, so you can really spend the time on each key and really start to ingrain them into your playing. That's the most important thing. Okay, keep things really, really simple. We're done. I hope this was helpful somehow. If you have any questions, just let me know here below in the comments. And um, don't forget to like the video and subscribe. And I will see you soon with the hook, whatever. <laughs> Take care. Bye. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.